I don't have to tell you things are bad. Everybody knows things are bad. Everybody's out of work or scared of losing their job. The dollar buys a nickel's worth. Banks are going bust. Shopkeepers keep a gun under the counter. Punks are running wild in the street. And there's nobody anywhere who seems to know what to do, and there's no end to it. We know the air is unfit to breathe, and our food is unfit to eat. We sit watching our TVs while some local newscaster tells us that today we had 15 homicides and 63 violent crimes, as if that's the way it's supposed to be. We know things are bad, worse than bad. They're crazy. It's like everything everywhere is going crazy, so we don't go out anymore. We sit in the house, and slowly the world we're living in is getting smaller, and all we say is, please, at least leave us alone in our living room. Just leave us alone. Well, I'm not going to leave you alone. I want you to get mad. Get mad. Well, that's exactly what the students of Marysville Getchell High School decided to do. On September 8, 2016, they formed an online petition demanding a change in their community. Within the next 24 hours, over 760 students, parents, and graduated alumni signed that petition. They were defending their small learning communities. Okay, so for all you newbies, we have some scrolls for you to um, find out what house you're in. So bring them during lunch and you'll find out. Also, we have a special competition for you guys. These students are members of the ISC Leadership, a year-long class that runs the school's house system. They're preparing for the first event of the year, the Sorting Assembly. Every year, new students are placed in a cohort of the student body. They befriend and take care of each other, with the older students often mentoring the younger ones. So a special house competition. And you'll be able to find out your um, house names and earn points for your house by participating. So bring them during lunch and you'll find out. Also, we have They've often been referred to as the Harry Potter School. This year, they've embraced the stereotype. Yes, the students of the ISC are doing quite well. Their small learning community is a resounding success. But what is a small learning community? And where do they even come from? To answer that, we have to go back, way back, to the beginning. Here's the other issue that I just think we've got to be uh, concerned about. We can't stifle innovation. And people in our business get mad about innovation. They get angry if you do something different. If you try something new, people always ask you, who are all in charter school? Yeah, it's charter. Let's try some stuff. Let's see. This stuff hasn't worked for 55 years. Let's try something different. What if we were to enable students to design and control their own education? It was on these basic concepts that small learning communities, also known as SLCs, were developed. The United States Department of Education first proposed the idea in the year 2000, but it wasn't until billionaire and Microsoft founder Bill Gates began pushing the idea that small learning communities began to spread. What we saw along with uh, some leaders in the field was that the smaller high schools 
uh, really did a lot of things better. The teachers and students knew each other better. Uh, the attendance was far better. Uh, the uh, violence was less. And there was even some effect uh, on graduation rates. This push for an educational reform was largely driven by the failures of the traditional school system. Instead of trying to meet the vague and often conflicting needs of masses of students that can be numbered into thousands, SLCs are autonomous and able to curtail to a more manageable and practical goal of roughly 400 students. Essential to this process are several key strategies, such as multi-grade advisories, student mentorship programs, block scheduling, and student houses. Through these strategies, students develop a sense of belonging to their school and are able to be taught on a far more personal level. With SLC's small size, it is easy to determine what strategies will best suit those students. So let's take a look at how SLC's played out. Janice Clancy is a retired ISC math teacher whose career spans 20 years. She is beloved by students and staff alike and was there when small learning communities were first implemented in Marysville. The greatest pleasure I get out of the teacher is seeing my students succeed. So some, some students are really smart and would ex exceed no matter, you know, they would excel no matter who their teachers were. But having students who come to me and say, I've never understood math until you started teaching me and now it makes sense. And I hear those comments every year. When you had advisory every week, uh, you got to know the students who were in your advisory. It might be that you teach juniors and seniors and maybe you have freshmen and you never had the freshmen in there because they're, fresh, they're transfer students. But when you had it on a weekly basis, you got to know them. And it also gave them an opportunity to get to know the teacher and to get to know each other well. We had lots of activities. We had um, some videos that the kids created that were um, like based on music. There was one on a Queen song, you know, Mamma Mia, Mamma Mia, oh, Mamma Mia, Mamma Mia, Mamma Mia, let me go. Oh my gosh! And they and they would do one about every month or so, and so then they would show it to the school, and they were really innovative and wonderful. It was so creative for the kids. It's little stories like that that just really touch my heart that I know that I made a difference. That somebody's been successful because they got to know me. Let's get an outside opinion. Michael Wood is a fairly new teacher. Right now he's only working as a substitute, but he hopes to be taken on as a full-time teacher at the ISC. It was probably one of the most rewarding years of my life, 2014 to 2015, that school year. Here at ISC, I made great connections with the kids, absolutely loved the work. I didn't know what to expect coming in. I thought they would be your typical high school, high school students, like I was. I was an incredibly bad high school student. So I thought, well, that's obviously how all kids are. And when I got here, it was, it was quite the opposite. The, the kids were amazing. They do great work. Um, they're not afraid to ask for help, uh, which was kind of nice because that's what I was here to do. And uh, I thought, you know, the kids are incredible here. So when I had a chance to come back and substitute teach, uh, any chance I get to come here, I do. Uh, we have a pretty tough environment. You know how it is with students. When they hear that they have a sub, first thing they do is shout out, we've got a sub. And then they think that's free reign to go crazy. But at some schools, the students still you know, manage to, to apply themselves and become actively involved in their, in their own learning, who take, take their work a little more serious, still love to have fun, but they seem a little more engaged and a little more involved and active participants in their education, uh, which I think is, is always makes it easier on teachers, especially substitutes. And that, that's great for me because then I get to be helpful and, and, uh, and have a great day. It's December 8th, three months since the student petition was made and signed. The Marysville School District is holding a parent meeting. A winter storm has blown in. It's cold and the streets are icy. The meeting was largely unadvertised. Yet despite this, over 100 people attend, filling up the small room. Among them are three generations of alumni. The risk of Marysville losing the SLCs they used to attend frightens them so greatly that they are willing to take time out of college finals week to attend this meeting. I managed to snag an interview with them. The, the big word that comes to mind is culture. 
there was a certain culture that they tr- that as students and as teachers you tried to create and this culture was self-feeding as long as the students and the teachers buy into this culture the culture improves and as the culture improves more teachers and more students buy into it in fact i think that a lot of people feel I, this is unfortunate i think this happens in any kind of just any you know big mass group type of system where people who um aren't don't have the titles you know feel like they don't have power to make stuff happen you always think like your first year in high school like oh man i'm so nervous there's these teachers and there's these seniors that i'm so afraid of that i'm not supposed to be afraid of but it's just that a second nature you know and, and having the advisory experience really gave me that that sense of comfortability that sense of, of connectedness kind of this this um this implicit rule that these people are going to be there for you they're not there to bully you or, or to pressure you but they're there to only help you forward. The buy-in comes from people going, oh my goodness, what I say matters. The choices that I make, the things that I do, the person that I elect, the person that I want to lead my house. I matter. My voice matters. And because my voice matters, I am more willing to do more. I am more willing to be involved. I am more willing to include myself and put myself out there and to risk spectacularly because I see that other people are as well and because I have that choice to do so or to not do so. It gave me chances to to experience what it was like being a mentor to to other underclassmen and, and kind of looking back on how I was an underclassman looking up to the, the seniors, here I am as an upperclassman getting to guide the underclassmen, kind of like giving back, you know. I mean, you start building connections, you start making friendships, you start understanding people much better when you have things like where the, where ISC, what ISC does on a micro level, the SLC system as a whole does on a macro level, where you have things that are either by SLC or by grade level and you have those combinations. It's hard to do in a high school. Like, you think of, you know, your stereotypical high school, you know, together in cliques with your grade level, um, you know, seniors versus juniors versus sophomores versus freshmen. Uh, that's exactly the kind of structure that, that advisories break. Uh, it is designed to have that vertical connection uh, so that you have your big elephants at the very top who, you know, say, this is, you know, I was in your position last year or two years ago. Uh, and this is what I wish I would have done better, or this is what I wish I would have done different. <laughs> Students pass their classes because they have people they trust and can either be their mentors or their, their um, or just you know basically give them advice. I, I care about the ISC a lot because it made me who I am. It's weird because like, I feel like for me, I'm still doing my best to make that legacy on the ISC. At this point, I had enough footage, but Riley wanted to keep talking. He had a story, a message he wanted to share. It gave me faith, that's what it gave me. I was like a four, I was a 4.0 student like freshman year and then I was still really good in my sophomore year and, and while I was going through like family problems, so, like the end of sophomore year, that's when things got really bad and my parents got divorced, I moved houses, this and that, and my grades dropped and I was struggling to like keep up anything. That's when I started like thinking like, man, I don't like school anymore. Like, I, I hate school now. Like, this this place that I used to call it my safe haven was just another place I didn't want to be. And I started thinking that I should just, you know, give up. And because like, these teachers were always there for me. I see teachers are all there for me all the time. And, and here I am not, here I am just letting them down. That's what I was thinking the whole time. Like, I'm not, I'm not keeping up to their expectations, so. I told them, I was like, no, I feel bad because I'm not doing what you guys think that I'm doing. They, they told me straight up, they were like, Riley, you need to think about yourself. You, we will always be proud of you no matter what, so just keep doing your thing. And we understand, and, and what we're giving you is not sympathy, but it's empathy. And that's when I, it finally dawned on me is that, whoa, like, there are these other people that are going through things. Because at that same time, I was realizing that that here I was, the scholarly student, now the student that hates school. So on two different sides of the spectrum, I'm on this perspective now. And I understand all these people around me that I used to judge. And now I'm thinking, man, these people have their own lives. They have their own reasons why they're either failing at school or they don't like school. 
And it made me realize that it's not all about school anymore. It's all about what other people are going through. Let's go back to the ISC, see how things are doing there. Remember those leadership kids? Well, even leadership has a class. And the teacher of ISC's leadership is Mr. Ron Chapin. You guys did not need to do this, but thank you so much. I appreciate You're it. very welcome. This has been such an awesome opportunity. Just the fact that you would stay late and come early and do this means a whole bunch. Yeah, we also brought donuts. Oh, yeah, just. just <laughs> did you guys not think of something? You guys just thought of everything. Can I get a photo with all you guys? Yeah. yeah. I remember my. My very first day in ISC at a staff meeting, and it's four heads of house, four students, running a meeting with all the adults sitting around a table. And the principal's not involved. I mean, he's involved listening, but not involved in what was going on at that moment, and they were making a decision. I've seen the success every year. And even as we've been taking more and more things away, we've had different administrators, we've had uh, different structures that have been pulled from you know the system that we're used to. If we're pushing these kids uh, to at some point, you know, be on their own as individuals and become leaders, then they have to start making decisions. And we have to put them in a position to practice that. And so what a better way to do that than in high school. We have to put them in a position to lead. We have to put them in a position to make decisions. If we're making all these decisions for them, then when are they ever gonna have that opportunity? When they get in the real world and that's their first shot at it? Back when we started, uh, I got the first leadership class. Uh, we had s different committees that were developed, and those committees would then propose an idea to me. It wasn't an idea that I gave to them and said, here's what needs to be done at our school. They collectively would group up, brainstorm, and then pitch an idea on a project proposal, and then submit it to me, and then I'd review it. But most of the time, those proposals then, if I approved it, it would still, it wasn't my decision to make. I would take that proposal to a committee, well, to our lunch meetings, and that's where the whole staff is. And the ISC staff would hear the proposal, again, not through me, through the kids, and then we would make a decision based on that. And I think that's really crucial for kids to be in that position to, you know, be able to be the designer, be, be able to be the planner, the creator, um, and then get feedback on it. When students really felt that we were honoring that, and that they were truly in that position that they could make these decisions and propose these ideas to the adults of the world, then the other kids started thinking, wow, this is kind of cool. And then we started getting more students that wanted to be involved in this leadership idea. And it wasn't just the heads of house, it was the prefects. And then there was kids outside of that group that wanted to be involved. And so it just snowballed from there. Well, I've seen it both ways too. I've seen it when the adults make all the decisions. The ones that don't seem to work really well, are the ones where the adult says, here's what we're doing, and here's how we're doing it. And then, you know, you kind of treat it like a minion. In our opinion, it's more important for the kid to generate the idea, um, because then I feel like there's buy-in. It's theirs. They own it. This is their idea, with some feedback and tweaks here and there. But ultimately, when, when you get the green light, and you know this is your baby, and then you got a group of like-minded people that are help growing this idea, and you need something greater, um, with some staff input, and then, Think of how many people are in, involved in this one decision, this one competition, whatever the case may be. And then if it goes well, which typically they do with that much input and that much feedback, it's amazing. And everyone feels collectively like, look what we did as opposed to look what I did. It's easy to buy into team when you feel like you belong to something. And it's when you don't belong to something is when it's easy to sit back and put the headphones on and tune out and go, why does this matter to me? I, things that matter to me are things I'm involved in, that I feel like I'm a part of and someone wants me to be involved. But if no one's asking, I mean, where's that gonna leave you? Alone.
in the corner of your scroll, top corner, I think, don't really know. You should have you should have a symbol of some sort. Now, each of these symbols corresponds to what house you're gonna be placed in. This was a lunchtime activity. Typically, the ISC has its sorting assembly as an actual assembly. This year, they were not granted such an opportunity. Yet students still came. Every single member of the freshman class voluntarily gave up their lunchtime to attend this event. Why? They didn't have to go. The event wasn't required. They went because they wanted to belong. They like all of us, wanted something to care for and wanted to be cared for in return. Can I get a drum roll, please? Finally, let's talk to the students. It's strange that we should be speaking to students last when their voices are among the first that should be heard. The world we're living in is scary, beautiful, but outright terrifying. If school is anything less than a home for students, then it has failed completely and utterly. Because for some students, it is their only home. What any district can do, regardless if they have SLCs or not, is implement the strategies they brought about. Allow students to have a voice, a say in what goes about their school to allow their bright, creative minds, the future of this world, bring about a future that they can believe in. If let's forget student voice. We actually want students to take a control in their learning. We actually have students on the selection panels that select staff. We actually have students on our curriculum committees. They are the victims of the curriculum. They should have some input into it. It's always been this almost magical place. Everything, everyone is so loving, caring. It's a community unlike anything I've ever seen or felt before. And I f felt and saw that starting to fade around me and I didn't want to let that go on. My favorite thing about SLCs is that I'm growing with the kids I'm around the entire time. It's, it's really bringing this idea of anybody can come from anything and be anyone. You have to have something that you believe in and something that presses you on further than what normally you do. If you truly believe in this cause or this purpose, you will go the extra mile. And you going the extra mile will inspire others. If I'm in a big community, one year I'm with these kids, one year I'm with these kids, one year I'm with this, these kids, and I don't, I'm not staying consistently growing and watching each other while they're watching me grow. Having, having someone to look up to, it's inspiration. After getting used to it, kind of, after getting used to what this is, I had something to aspire to be and to do. It gave me something to work toward and something to pass on. You make a mistake and you're like, oh, that's fine, I'll just 
leave it how it is, and then you've got people that know that you can do better, that are there to support you, say, no, 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 do that again, because I know you can do this, I know you can get this, try it again. The community does do a lot for students. You know, some students have Mr. James for four years. That's the coolest thing ever, because this teacher is watching them write their two-paragraph freshman essays to getting fives on their AP exams. You have to be able to push the people out of their small groups into these larger groups. We had these schools set up basically almost like clubs. It was a lot of fun, and you almost had, you did have a sense of belonging to, if not the school, your house system, your teachers. It felt very close. I came here with almost no friends from middle school. It was very much, I didn't know almost anyone, and to have someone who was actively approaching me and being friendly towards me and helping me out, that was very encouraging and very helpful. Get mad. That's what the students of Marysville Getchell decided to do. And what they can't figure out is why nobody else will. <laughs>